Greetings, everybody. Richard Fulmer here. So I thought what we'd do is we'd have another listening room. I haven't done one for last one I did. was about a month back, maybe a bit longer, just to uh, show you guys what I've been listening to. And, uh, yeah, quite a variety. I'm not going to go into too much detail about every album, just to give you an idea of what I've been listening to in the cold uh, nights here in spring in Cape Town, although spring... I say that word very lightly because it's it's almost like we're having another winter. Anyway, you don't really want to hear about the weather here, do you? Um, the first one we're going to check out is a band called Dead Meadow. I'm not sure how many of you have heard of this band. Um, this is an album called... Oh, something... Gr Old Growth. The writing is very indistinct on the cover there. Old Growth. And I don't know how many albums these guys have made. Not that many. Um, if you like stuff like Black Mountain or, um, bits of Hawkwind, uh, that kind of vibe, um, psychedelic, space rock, maybe more on the psychedelic doom even, uh, some nice riffs, uh, interesting guitar licks, um, quite a few tracks on here, as you can see at the back. There's not too much I can show you in the inside. Oh, it's just that little snow scene there uh here's the picture of the band i think it's a trio and uh yeah interesting stuff but what i hate about these cds in the booklets is the indistinct writing i don't know how you're supposed to know what the hell that is but anyway you can't really sing along to that and there's a really interesting picture there and if you can see how well you can see that in the glare so there dead meadow that's what i've been listening to one of the things i've been listening to um, definitely headphone music, uh, yeah, just takes you away, Old Growth is the name of the album, check it out, next one, going back in time to 19, sure, what was a 71, I think, Grand Funk Survival, that ever so slightly dodgy cover, will probably be dodgy by today's standards, you know, it might not be uh, politically correct or whatever. <laughs> Three of them in a cave. And uh, you know, this this is not a bad album. The only issue I have with this album was the recording of the drums. The drum sound is absolutely terrible. It sounds like he's, Don Brewer is drumming on tin cans. But besides that, it's got some really cool tracks. Country Road, um... All You've Got Is Money, which is quite a strange track. Right at the end, there's like this woman screaming, and it's all about, um, you know, if money's all you have, that's pretty sad. Um, Comfort Me, Feeling All Right, which is a cover. I think that was done by Traffic. Cheers, guys. Um, so that's Feeling All Right. Then you've got I Want Freedom. Um, I Can Feel Him in the Morning, which is... I suppose it was a gospel kind of song, you know, Mark Farner sometimes just got a little bit on the preachy side for me. Um, so that one I normally skip through. And then a really nice version of the Stones, Gimme Shelter. There's an a, a even better version of them doing that track on the uh, Caught in the Act live album from 1975. So that was a few years later. And there are one, two, three, four, five bonus tracks on here. Feeling all right, alternate versions, etc. There's a couple of live shots in the middle. I don't want to go through too much because I've got quite a few to show. So that's Grand Funk Railroad, as they were first known. Later, they just became Grand Funk and Survival. And then, uh, with the passing recently of Bernie Marsden from uh, White Snake, sadly. Um, he passed away about a month back, I think, or a little less. I decided to revisit some of the early White Snake, possibly my favourite of the of the early lineups. Um, Ready and Willing, great album. Um, Fool for Your Loving, Sweet Talker, Ready and Willing, uh, Blind Man, Ain't Gonna Cry No More. Every track on here is just brilliant. And this is with John Lord on keyboards, Bernie Marsden on guitar, obviously. Uh, Neil Murray on bass. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was here. Ian Pace on drums. 
and Mickey Moody on guitar. So you had a, a quite a purple connection with this album. Some of his old buddies in John Lord and Ian Pace. Excellent album. Good blues rock when uh, David Coverdale's voice was still right up there. Then I had a short uh, revisit to The Doors. This is a Doors collection. Uh, all these albums over there. And the one in particular that I like to listen to, it comes with this uh, little booklet and uh, tells you about each album. Not too much info. Um, the one I listened to was LA Woman. Probably my favorite Doors album. Uh, very bluesy. Um, Almost like a jam album in some parts. Uh, it's got uh, Riders on the Storm. That's the last track. LA Woman. Uh, the Changeling. Trying to think what else is on here. That's of note. Uh, Hyacinth House. Really nice album. And you know, if he, he was on his way out, Jim Morrison. His health wasn't that great. And not long after this album, he did pass away. But... His voice sounds pretty strong on that album, I must say. I was really quite impressed. Uh, the other one I listened to on here was Morrison Hotel. So that was me revisiting The Doors. Uh, it goes in there. Then I revisited uh, the early Rush Live, All the World's a Stage, their first uh, official live album. And uh, got some really cool live shots in the middle the joy of vinyl and uh, yeah this is a brilliant album um not as produced or overproduced as some of the later live albums were this is pretty raw stuff uh bastille day anthem fly by night in the mood something for nothing by tour and the snow dog brilliant in the end uh lakeside park 2112 Working Man, Finding My Way, and What You're Doing. So, this is the first of their live albums um, to feature Neil Peart. Because, I mean, this had come out in, what, 74, around there, 75? Maybe a bit later. So, they hadn't really done that many albums. But you can see what an influence the man was on this band. Not only with the... The drumming but with the songwriting as well just classic stuff so that was rush and then as you know if you watch my channel i've been doing some uh, jazz rock fusion albums and uh, i went through these two Alda miola and Bill Co billy cobham great albums if you're into jazz rock fusion if you haven't seen it yet just go to videos and you can check out that video there and then lastly, one of the albums that I listened to just the other night, Uriah Heep's Firefly. And this is with uh, John Lawton on vocals. He took over from David Byron. It's a really nice uh, sort of a pencil sketch, I guess, or pen sketch of the guys inside. And uh, when this first came out, I wasn't that impressed. But, you know, I've, I've revisited this a few times. And there must say, there's some really great tracks on here. The Hanging Tree, uh, that's a good track. Wise Man, uh, Rolling On, and the title track, Firefly. Brilliant stuff. So who was in the band here? Um, Lee Kerslake on drums and vocals, Mick Box on guitar and vocals, John Lawton on lead vocals, Trevor Boulder on bass and vocals, and of course Ken Hensley on guitar, keyboards and vocals. So kind of the classic lineup. Um, only one missing here is David Byron and uh, Gary Thane, obviously the other bassist. Uh, produced by Jerry Bron. Jerry Bron had bronze records, uh, which uh, Uriah Heep were part of for quite a few albums in quite a few years. They also featured Motorhead. That was the other notable band to be on the bronze label. So there we go. Just a quick look at what I've been listening to the past month or so. Um... Yeah, it's interesting when you revisit stuff that you haven't listened to for such a long time. It uh, kind of inspires you all over again and you, you get into it and you realize what great albums there were. Um, not to say that there aren't new albums coming out that are good too. Uh, just by the way, there's a new Rival Sons out as well. It's part two of the first album called Dark Fighter. 
and I think the the new one is called Light Light something. So there's a sort of a, a good and evil kind of thing with the two albums uh, stretched out a few months between each other. So there is good stuff out there, but as you can see, I I like to revisit stuff from the seventies and stuff that I listened to many years ago. There we go, guys. I'll catch you soon for another Richard's Rock Rambles. Take care out there. Enjoy the video, please, down below. Give me a thumbs up. Any comments, please. Let me know what you guys think. Any suggestions. And yeah, just take it easy. Bye-bye.